Imagine a shape that stretches infinitely far yet only holds a finite amount of volume. At first glance, this seems to defy all logic. How can something infinitely long contain a limited space? It feels impossible. Yet mathematics proves otherwise. This object is known as Gabriel's Horn, a paradox that challenges our intuition and blurs the line between the infinite and the finite. But before diving into the mathematics behind this fascinating shape, let's first define it more clearly. Gabriel's horn is a three-dimensional figure created by revolving the curve y equals 1 over x around the x-axis for x is greater than or equal to 1. The result is a shape that resembles an infinitely long, tapering trumpet. But what truly makes it mind-bending is its paradoxical nature. While it has an infinite surface area, its volume remains finite seemingly defying the very principles of geometry. Though, rest assured, this bizarre trumpet doesn't break mathematics. At its core, Gabriel's horn is a clever demonstration of how infinite sums can converge to a finite value. Consider a square that is repeatedly filled halfway. While this process continues infinitely, the total area remains bounded. Similarly, despite its infinite length, Gabriel's horn behaves like a convergent series where an endless sum still results in a finite quantity. These series serve as a great introduction, but to truly grasp this paradoxical shape, we must return to its roots in calculus, the realm of the integral. In calculus, integrals function similarly to infinite sums, but with a key distinction. They evaluate continuous functions. Essentially, an integral determines the area beneath a given curve, making it particularly useful for identifying convergence. If a function is convergent, the integral will confirm it. And in the case of y equals 1 over x, the curve used to create Gabriel's horn, its integral is the natural logarithm. However, when evaluated from 1 to infinity, it results in infinity minus 0, which diverges, revealing an infinite area. Wait, what? Okay, something strange is clearly going on. If Gabriel's horn truly has a finite volume, how can its cross-sectional area be infinite? Take a moment to guess, does revolving the shape somehow change its capacity? Maybe the divergence in two dimensions doesn't carry over when we introduce the z-axis. Or perhaps our intuition about how solids of revolution behave is misleading us. Let's explore what's really happening. Let's refine our understanding of the solids of revolution. Essentially, this process takes a two-dimensional shape and at every point along its length, uses that value as the radius of a cross-sectional circle. The result is a three-dimensional figure where the original 2D shape defines its cross-section. For simple solids like cylinders and cones, we have well-established formulas to calculate their volumes. However, when it comes to Gabriel's horn, no such shortcut exists we must determine its volume from scratch using integration. If you think about it, the y value at any point on the graph represents the radius of its cross section. By summing up all these cross sections, we can determine the exact volume of the shape. To do this, we need to continuously evaluate the area of each circular cross section, which using the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared, or in this case, pi y squared. The key to calculating the total volume, however, lies in the integral. The integral takes the infinitesimally small volumes of these countless cross-sections and transforms them into a single, manageable expression. This fundamental concept gives us the formula for solids of revolution, a powerful tool applicable to nearly any continuous function and its corresponding solid. Now the next step is to apply this process to Gabriel's horn. By substituting y equals 1 over x into our formula, factoring out the constant pi and evaluating the integral of 1 over x squared, we begin to unravel the mystery. The result might not be immediately obvious, but rewriting 1 over x squared in index form as x to the negative 2 allows us to apply the power rule. Integrating gives us negative 1 over x, and when evaluated from 1 to infinity, it results in a finite value of 1. Just like that, Gabriel's horn unveils the secret behind its paradoxical finite volume. Oh, alright, take a breather, we've just explained the main chunk of this fascinating shape, though one issue still lingers. 
If infinite length doesn't imply infinite volume, why does it work on surface area? Let's take the formula for volume derived previously and make one simple change. Replace the area of a circle with the circumference. When we apply this modified formula for surface area, we see that 1 over x is no longer squared, leading it to exhibit the same divergence once again. And there you have it, a simple proof of Gabriel's horn. But at first glance, the shape seems completely impractical. When would such an object ever exist outside the realm of theoretical mathematics? Well, surprisingly, it might actually have a real-world counterpart. The concept of infinity central to Gabriel's horn plays a crucial role in understanding the infinitely dense nature of a black hole. In a way, this shape serves as a geometric analogy for a singularity, a point that is both infinitely small and infinitely dense. Pretty fascinating, right? But whether or not you ever encounter the shape in the real world, Gabriel's horn serves as a powerful reminder to question intuition and challenge assumption. Just because something seems paradoxical doesn't mean it's incorrect, and much like in life, Gabriel's horn teaches us that things aren't always as they first appear.